Joel Quenville, three-time Stanley Cup champion, now joins us. Q, what's going on? How are you? Doing all right. How are you guys doing? Pretty well. Um, what have you been up to lately? Uh, playing a lot of pickleball um, yeah. down in Florida and uh, pickleball heaven right around Naples. And uh, a little bit of everything, watching a lot of hockey, talk to a lot of hockey people, um, keep a little bit involved uh, to what's going on around the league. But, uh, you know, a little bit of golf, a little bit of tennis, a uh, little bit of horses, a uh, little bit of everything. Love you might that. not want to come it. back to hockey after all that by the sounds of things. Well, when it's all over, it's a, uh, I know we'll be okay. Got a great 10. Got the Muzzies uh, looking fantastic as well. Uh, I'm curious, what do you like to watch a hockey game with? Like if I were to sit down with you like tomorrow watching a hockey game, would you be very vocal breaking things down or would you just sit back and watch? When I'm watching the game now, I strictly watching for entertainment. Like you're, you're watching players, your systems kind of jump out at you, but you don't... Uh, I'm more relaxed when I'm watching the game is no, uh, you know, uh, you know, you get entertained, you watch uh, Austin score another hat trick or you're watching, uh, you know, I watch again, some of the league game last night, they were flying. I don't think I've ever seen them skate that well. So there was a, uh, but those things are, uh, you know, you're basically watching it for uh, seeing the skill level and, uh, and watching the compete level. Yeah, we've been uh, breaking it down all year, obviously. And, you know, the line juggling has been happening constant with Sheldon Keefe. He he rarely keeps the same lines. He could have success with a group and just change it up. And doesn't seem to be a lot of rhyme or reason. What's your philosophy on that? Do you like to, to mix it up and try to find the chemistry? Or do you think it's important to let guys gel and figure it out for themselves? Well, I think I'm a lot like Sheldon, where I uh, I let the players uh, dictate us who we uh, who we feel that are are deserving of more ice time, and uh, sometimes uh, the way the score is going, the way they're playing, uh, they'll get rewarded. Um, but I'm not uh, afraid to, in the course of a game, mix up the lines. I know I get a lot of uh, criticism for that as well back when I was doing it. Um, but it's it's the same thing that uh, you know players all want to play. They all want to play more. They all want to play in better situations. And uh, sometimes you earn it uh, based on uh, how you're competing and how you're playing. And sometimes, you know, just mixed up one guy on a line and uh, feel that little change. It could give you a little spark or a little connection amongst the three of them. Um, but, uh, you know, Toronto's got a lot of good options. We are always spoiled with so many different options. You know, everybody probably felt they deserved to be on the power play or be, deserved to be playing with a taser or a caner. Um, so there's... You know, you're fortunate to be in those positions where uh, you had all the options at your disposal, which uh, it was tough for your opponents to worry about what line they got to be concerned with. So, Q, I can picture you sitting on your couch, sitting back and watching the season unfolding for Austin Matthews, 52, 52 goals, excuse me, in 55 games. What, what, what goes through your head watching this guy play this season? Well, he's fun to watch. I can remember when I was working with Donnie in Chicago, Granado, who had him with the development program with the U.S. team. And uh, he used to say they used to beat some teams pretty bad. And then and, and Austin, by the third period, he used to have to tell Austin, OK, Austin, just take a little bit off here. And, uh, you know, just, you know, instead of winning by 12 goals, you know, maybe we win by seven or eight. But uh, he he was that uh, he had a different level of uh, ability um domination uh might be part of it uh i love the way he shoots the puck i like how he finds the way to get himself open the puck follows him around as well wants the puck all the time um you know he's uh you know he's an elite elite player you know you're talking about uh mcdavid himself uh maybe one two in the game you could argue at the end of the year um but certainly uh austin uh, is having an outstanding year um, but he entertains me how he, uh, I, I remember standing behind a bench and did directly in line on one of his shots on, uh, on their power play one year. And it just, thank God it hit the post, but it was a, it was going a million miles an hour. And then, uh, basically just standing there ripping it, uh, as hard as he does without even slapping it. Uh, hmm. he's got the knack. He's a great player. He sure does. On the other side of that, with the uh, players that may be struggling that you've came across, you know, we think of Tyler Bertuzzi right now, hasn't really been able to put it together as a Maple Leaf. What's your strategy for a guy like that? I mean, Tyler's played lots of minutes, power play with all the big boys and just can goes through these, you know, massive slumps of 20 games without goals. And what's your strategy for a guy that's struggling that you're kind of waiting for him to break out of a, a slump? 
over the course of the season, you're going to have every guy in every different scenario where they're, they're confident, they're struggling, they're, they feel down. They, they're, you know, they're, they want more ice time. Uh, they're, they're, and, and then they're sitting there, uh, you know, you're not playing with this guy. You're getting removed from the power play. Um, everybody has those times where you got to work through it. Uh, I always try to do things in a, in a positive way with each player, um, having a pretty good understanding where everybody, every player where they're at when they come into work that day or to play or practice. Um, and then, uh, you know, we try to, uh, encourage them when the things are down. Um, I, but I think our great uh, motivator as a coach is the delegation of ice time. And, uh, you know, and sometimes guys say they have no confidence. It's, it's tough just to grab confidence out of the air and give it to somebody. But, uh, you know, there's going to be some moments over the course of a game where he has a big shift or a good shift. And then uh, maybe, you know, you come back with him real quickly and you, you reward him uh, maybe with a power play shift or you give him an extra shift late in the period um, when they're going well. Um, I know even when they're not going well, sometimes you, you might uh, miss some shifts. You might take them out of the lineup. I don't Players at that that caliber, I think that uh, you know it's tough to do that. But at the same time, uh, um, there's ways of getting their attention where we got to do things differently. Um, we just can't keep going on like this and uh, expect this to change unless we try different things. And I think that uh, being open with the player and uh, telling them, "Hey, but let's we got to try everything here to get you uh, back on the right track here, and uh, let's work together and find a find a solution to this." One of the big stories lately for this Leafs team, obviously they're winning a lot of games, but is, I guess, the demotion of John Tavares to 3C and Max Domi up to 2C. Um, do you like that role for John Tavares? I know the sample size is sort of small. And on top of that, uh, how does that conversation, like where does that conversation go when it comes to like speaking to a veteran like John Tavares and saying, hey, we're going to take you off PP1. We're going to move you down the lineup a, a bit. How's that lineup, uh, that chat go, excuse me? Uh, that's a hard conversation to have, but I think that uh, John is, I think he's had a tremendous career. I think he knows uh, where he's at, where he's uh, with the team, how he fit in, uh, fit in he, how he's fitting in with the with the club. Um, he's going to want, uh, you know, I think there's an understanding with him uh, going back to Toronto and, and playing for the Leafs and, and where he's been over the last, has he been there five years now or is it uh, how many years he's been there? since he's been back uh six this is your six, six years you know and yeah. it's like he understands where they you know where they're at as a team and the, and the, you know i think it's the win now mode they're in i think that anything you can do to help the team in that situation uh, you find a way to fit in and i think that he has a really good understanding of where what their needs are and uh anything to you know to stay positive internally with his own game but at the same time i think he knows that he can be a valuable contributor uh, just by being positive around the team and uh, adding everything he can and in, in, in maybe not in a bigger way, but in, in his own way. Um, and you got to look at Max last night. I'd never seen him skate like that. And when he picked up that puck there outside yeah. the blue line, I'm saying, holy God, I didn't know he's that quick. And he makes a nice finish on the play. But obviously he seems like he's excited about uh, a little, little more work and a little bit more uh, quality ice time. So Q, you've been in the pro hockey game. I'm not, not trying to date you, but since 1978, <laughs> you've been to all kinds of different organizations and cities and everything in between. You've seen it all. Let's just hypothetically say every team in the NHL has got an opening head spot position and they all want you. <laughs> where, where are you leaning towards? <laughs> well, I, you know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, there's a lot of good opportunities around the game. You've seen, uh, you know, all the coaching changes this year, a number of them uh, have had some success, you know, Edmonton, you know, LA recently, uh, you know, Patrick going in the aisle right now and probably yeah. had a tough night last night, but certainly uh, they're all, you know, everybody has their run. And I think when you got an awareness to where teams are, as far as their reality of uh, being a championship team or being a stuck, uh, cup contender and may maybe being a playoff team, I think uh, this year is, the parody in the game is so tight. It's, uh, you know, a number of teams feel like they, they made inroads of maybe being a playoff contender. Um, but who's the best team this year? You could argue every uh, every two teams in every division. And then you got uh, the other teams that are going to make, uh, you know, a good comparison against those groups. But, uh, um, you know, they say there's one place in particular. Um, uh, I'm not being picky and I'm not going to really. I don't, I don't really have a, they're all, they're all the same basically when I'm watch, watching hockey. You're nice. being modest. 1978 <laughs> NHL amateur draft. The Toronto Maple Leafs select you in the second round. Uh, what do you remember about being drafted by the Leafs? You ended up playing 99 games as a Maple Leaf. 
I remember uh, getting uh, drafted. I remember going uh, with Roger, um, Roger coaching us right off the bat. Uh, yeah, you know, I was, uh, I remember when I got traded with Lanny to, to, to Colorado, I've been talking to him over the last uh, uh, couple of weeks. Uh, thank God he's doing much better. And uh, yeah. I've been talking, texting uh, with him and his daughter. Um, I remember, uh, you know, I was playing with Borea. Salming was one of my, uh, you know, late Borea. He was a terrific guy to come and break in as a leaf. You know, just give him the puck, get out of the way, let him go. He was spectacular uh, as a partner. And, uh, wow, could he, could he skate and move? And uh, what a great player. Um, I see some Leafs there last year. We we're down here in uh, Naples, and uh, Patty Boutet's down here. I got to play pet golf with Patty Boutet, Mike Palmatier, and Doug Favell. That talk about a foursome. So we had a, we had a fun day talking about uh, Leaf days, and uh, with Booter and, and Palmy on that team, we were talking about nice. uh, Roger and uh, some of the fun t- situations we had. But we had a good team there that year. That was a uh, you know Tagger and can't say and Daryl and you know you name it. It was a, a totally. good group, and they were they were great for a young kid like me coming into the game. Uh, you know, not having any clue what to expect, and uh, but they're really uh, really supportive and really uh, welcoming. That's nice. What uh, you know, when I look back to your days with the Blackhawks, it's pretty hard not to call that a modern day dynasty. What you guys accomplished there, I was wondering what you see in this Maple Leafs team. Some of the similarities that can compare to your teams in in uh, in Chicago, and what some of the differences are. Well, we had a uh, oh, we had a we had a lot of good players. We had a we had a great team. Um, a yeah. lot of balance. Uh, the teams changed. Uh, all three different cups were uh, different uh, makeups. Um, the cup some real staples. So when you got a guy like Taze, uh, Taser, as far as being a competitor, I don't know if I've ever seen a, a better competitor or work with one uh, better than him. Um, just every, every, every game, the, the games got bigger. He just rose to the challenge and, uh, made sure everybody was up for it. Um, but you, you look at, uh, Kaner, I, the players that we had, uh, Hosa gets underestimated what he brought to the team. Duncan Siebes Crawford was, uh, instrumental in cups. We had guys underrated like, uh, a Yalmerson. You could say sharp. We had a uh, number of guys that I, and, and, but our team was competitive and tough. And uh, not not maybe not the biggest team, and I think teams try to take uh, a little advantage of that. You know, we'd have guys like Bowling; he would, you know, he'd take nothing, and he'd, Versteeg would fight you. You know, you had Buff there a couple of years. We had uh, a lot of good options as far as that. And I know in today's game, you know, the game's getting back, but you got to have some bite in the playoffs. And I think Toronto, uh, going through this period where they're at right now. Um, you know, you look back at that incident after the Ottawa game, I was watching that game and I think that you could argue about what the kid did on Ottawa and I'm sitting there, you know, guys are trying that stuff nowadays, you know, whether it's a Michigan player, this player, the stupid play he made or whatever, you could argue about it. And then you, you look at Toronto, probably a, one of the low points of their season right at that moment. And, uh, you know, you got to commend. I, I think that, uh, what are you, you going to do in that situation? You might not say that he went about it the right way, but I think that uh, that, that type of play could have been a defining moment for the team and the organization that that was the play this season that turned it around, got everybody's attention. You watch how they responded with the five-game suspension, how they played with him and without him when he came back last night. Hey, uh, that, was a, uh, that was a great moment. Maybe not the guy you would expect to do it from. That made it even better. Hey, that's leadership. And that's something I want to follow up with you, like quantifying what this six game win streak actually means in five in a row without Morgan Riley. Like, why did it how did how does it get to that level where you can look at that and be like, that's a galvanizing moment? Because I always like to circle back to last year. I'm sure you're aware of it. Keith Kachuk went on the radio in Toronto, called his son's team soft. And the next thing you know, the Florida Panthers go all the way to the Stanley Cup final before ultimately falling short to Vegas. So I'm just trying to figure out, is this real or not for this Leafs team and why they needed something like this to get cooking like this? Well, you certainly, uh, the guys responded in the right way, what, be it what they said and how they backed it up. And uh, and then last night was uh, with everybody back again. Uh, it looked like, uh, you know, they're on to something there. And I find that uh, the, the finding moments are going to happen in uh, every playoff round that you're going to go around in and go through um there'll be always that moment that one way or the other that was the 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 key to getting through a series um whether it's a play like that or it's going to be a situation or it could be a meeting could be uh anything but there's always something you can fall back on and say hey this is going to get it that that got us through there but uh, you got to recapturing and reinventing yourself each and every day and each and every round of finding that uh, little something that can push you and you can rally around it 
Q, as we get closer to getting, you know, Joseph Wool back after a high ankle sprain, depending on how that goes, do you like just having a number one goalie and it's his crease and he's he's the main number one and the next guy's two? Or do you mind when guys are kind of switch hitting and no one knows who's the number one and they're both, you know, potentials to have that spot? Would you rather do that or do you like it having being clean and cut? Uh, ideally, you'd rather have a one guy and 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 a, and a, and a one B or two B or whatever you how you want to phrase that. But it's a, a situation where you know making that decision of uh, whether you're rotating uh, over a course of a season. Um, I like you know your guy gets hot. You don't really want to take him out of the net. You might let him go a little bit. Um, but if you do got uh, you know the one guy key guy, he knows he's going to be playing when it counts. And, uh, and that's usually how it play plays out over the course of the season. But in the playoffs, I mean, uh, we've, we've gone uh, to the other guy a couple times when it's probably not, uh, advised or it's not, uh, the way it looks like it's going to be and, uh, and made some changes, but it's a, on an, on a need basis, uh, you know, I, I felt before earlier in my career, I'd probably be pulling goalies a little bit more. Now I'm probably more patient with them because you got an understanding of how, what they go through, and uh, how they they're going to respond to that, um, knowing that they feel that they, they're going to just they're going to get back on their feet in the middle of a game. But I always say, you know, we make changes with uh, players. Um, they move, they lose some ice time, or they miss some shifts, and uh, you know, uh, maybe you got to, you know, I got to be consistent in how we run the bench, and knowing that uh, performance matters. What's your uh, stance on the trade deadline? Two weeks away today. Well, I think as an organization, you got so many different things you got to be uh, concerned with as far as making deals now with the cap is being so constrictive on uh, a lot of top teams. And uh, that that's the key uh, ingredient, I guess, when you're looking at uh, what's available and what you can go shopping for. But I always found as a, if you you know, your team's in the playoffs and if you can improve it any which way, um, it's appreciated by you know, the coaching staff for sure. And then players, uh, you know, welcome that as well. Sometimes it gets a little tight on the, the guy that might be compromised in, in his positioning or his ice time. Um, as a player, we always know, as JL say, that they, hey, the worst, toughest thing in the business is moving or getting traded. Um, but at the same time, uh, your names are out there in uh, discussions on, uh, you know, who, who's going to get traded and all of a sudden your name's getting bandied about. That's not the, the most enjoyable time either, but uh, part of the game, get through it. Uh, some teams, uh, I've never had a problem usually going in and out of the trading deadlines um, as far as, you know, the team getting distracted by it. Um, I always find that uh, trying to get the welcome mat out for the guy coming into the team and make him comfortable right away is important. Um, but I've had, uh, we've had a number of different guys coming in, uh, you know, whether we trade them an older guy for a first round pick or this and that, and some have uh, been great additions. Some have been, uh, been fine, but I always think that, uh, the guys, uh, do a great job of welcoming them and making them feel comfortable as quickly as possible and, uh, welcoming into this the team and the community as well. Okay. Q, we'll get you back on the pickleball court with this. Uh, what are the chances we see you back behind an NHL bench? Um, Good question. Um, I, I, I can't put a number on it. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for your time All today. Right. And we, uh, we want to link up down the road. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys, for having me. Thanks, Q. Appreciate your time. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, we got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.